Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video guys. In the first video of Scala, I have just talked about the introduction to Scala. But in this video, I'll be talking about all the features in detail. Let's get started. The very first feature that we got is type inference. So what is type inference? It's a Scala's ability to infer types without uh, them being explicitly mentioned. It means Scala is smart enough, it's intelligent enough to recognize the type of that variable without have to specify that data type. It's called type inference. Second is immutability. What's immutability? It's a quality of being unchangeable. Uh, in Scala, the variables are immutable by default. Once assigned a value, they cannot be modified by you or any other programmer. This is one of the good point of Scala as a language. Third one is lazy computation or lazy evaluation. The Scala only evaluates an expression when it is required, right? And it, it, this, this feature of Scala increases the performance by reducing the compile time. Next is higher order functions. The higher order functions are the functions which take another functions as a arguments. They can also return functions along with the simple data types. So this is another a good feature of Scala language. Next is case class and pattern matching. In Scala, the case classes are regular classes with the added feature of being immutable. It's actually almost same as a, uh, as a regular classes, but it has a got, a got another feature, a extra feature, which is called immutability. This makes them uh, great for modeling the immutable data. The case classes are useful for pattern ma matching, which is used for checking a value against a pattern and deconstructing it into a constituent parts. We'll be discussing these uh, uh, points in a form of examples in upcoming videos. Next is string interpolation. The Scala string interpolation methods allow you to embed variables directly inside a string literal with allowing the creation of a string through the data. So another important feature of Scala. Next is trait. The trait are collection of abstract and non-abstract methods. They are similar to the Java's interface. Last point is extensive collection. Scala actually provides us the extensive collect, uh, collection of classes and traits which we are used uh, for collecting data, which are used for collecting data. And they are divided into two broad categories, mutable or immutable collections, and are, all are contained in the Scala's package, scala.collection. So guys, this marks the end of this little video in which I have explained the important features of this uh, Scala language. We'll be talking about these features in detail one by one with the help of examples in the upcoming video. Thanks for watching guys. See you next video.